Welcome back to another episode of Road to Pitches. Our names are Sachiko and Moritz, and we are converting a GMC Savannah box truck into our dream camper van. Last episode, we put up a lot of pine paneling and framed our dinette. Continuing right on, we start this episode with framing and paneling our left bench area. We also work on our Ava Spacia air heater and we'll show you how we will be getting hot water using electrical power. We want to take this moment to clear up something for you. We've had this question a lot. What does road to pitches mean? Road to pitches. Why? Road to pitches, because they will read in that direction. Will they? No, well, it's they correct. Read in this direction. Road to pitches. Road to riches is where the name came from. We had all sorts of puns to do with climbing, things that rhymes with trad or jugs. <laughs> The rubber, they got a little out of hand, but road to pitches is us being on the road traveling for a year to search for climbing pitches. And what are climbing pitches? Tops of mountains. Well, and in between. <laughs> when you're at the climbing gym, getting from the bottom to the top where the anchors are, that's a pitch. So imagine if you're trying to climb vertically up a mountain, you've got each of these pitches stacked on top of each other. And that's where road to pitches came from. It has nothing to do with baseball. <laughs> People are like, you play baseball? We're like, yeah, no, we don't. It has nothing to do with singing. It has nothing to do with beer or well, lemonade. Or well, nothing to do with lemonade, but plenty to do with pitches of beer. Pitches, pitchers of beer. <laughs> but anyway, hopefully that clears up some confusion for you. It is Road to Pitches. We are on our little journey to go search for climbing across North America if the borders ever open back up. Mm -hmm. We'll see about that. <laughs> if you recall from our first tour, we have a storage box out here that we actually haven't gotten a chance to explore yet. How do you open it? You opened it before. Yeah, I just pulled really hard. Oh, oh dear. What's that? What is that? <laughs> Looks like a Molotov cocktail. You. Ew, what is that? I have no idea. I don't want to know either. It smells really bad. Ew. What goes into building a frame? I've never built a frame before, so... Well, you built that uh, one? Yes. But I still don't know what goes into building a frame. I just do what seems reasonable to me. Can you explain quickly what we're doing here with this giant white cabinet? Now we're cutting it off and putting it here somewhere. Maybe left, maybe right, maybe middle. So we went for an IKEA cabinet because this is the perfect time for us to experiment and let the internet know if it rattles a us. <laughs> the inside of Ikea furniture is like this. That's what you're paying for Ikea folks, that's why it's so cheap. We forgot to get stir sticks, we got chopsticks. <laughs> what are you doing? Preparing the heater. Alright, let's take a close-up look at what we've got here. And it smells oddly like fuel, because that's the fuel line of the heater. Gross. How is the brackety thingy, thingy brackety coming along? Mm, I did a mistake. Oh no, what did you do? Well... So this... Doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> so I have to redo these ones. Oh um, no. This one is a slight bit too wide still, but an angle grinder isn't exactly an exact tool. No. Look at that! Moment of truth. Ah, it fits. Ah, should we butyl this also? But 
Dasputal like heat. Mm. Maybe the rubber seal is enough that's on the heat already. Probably. Yeah. Okay. I wouldn't double rubber it. Yeah. <laughs> Did you get that? No. Episode of using the wrong tool. What's that? That is the snorkel. <laughs> and what's that? This is a hose clam. How many of those do we have? I doubt we have enough. Hose clams. I'm gonna keep those. Wait, what? Uh, you want to keep those? Mm -hmm. Why? Well, I need to connect two cables with that monitor and What's, what is the likelihood of that? Very likely. So this is the intake. And this... Is the trumpet. What's coming out of that? Exhaust gas. Uh huh. Oops. Oh, let me look from underneath. So the snorkel can go somewhere over here. And that guy needs to bend a little bit more. And then we can likely mount it somewhere. We were just about to put in the second panel on the right side next to the hatch door. That's the cab. But look what we found. That is condensation, which means the box is still leaking. Upon further inspection, it's like you can tell that it's just, yeah, it's a pool of water. What to do, what to do. Find the leak and seal it. Looks like balls. Ugh. Okay, not that stress. We're fine. It just like soaked up so much water. I can squeeze out all this water and I've already squeezed out a lot of it. We don't know if this is water that's collected there over the span of, you know, the last few weeks or if it was just from one rainfall, but this is no bueno and um, we need to figure out a way to either seal the box, which we've caulked a billion times over and or create a drainage for this little pond that rainfall creates in our box. Can you tell us what you're working on right now? Hooking up our solar. Finally, this is the part I've been looking for. So we have our solar charger. We have a massive battery. We got a Leafy power. Life power. <laughs> <laughs> so on the right side is a solar charge controller. And what's uh -huh. that do? That converts the power coming from the solar panels into a usable format for the battery and watches a battery doesn't get overcharged, doesn't overheat and gets charged when it's warm enough and not when it's too cold and all that shebang. And it does the maximum power point tracking. Solar cell has different points where it operates optimally. When it's hotter, the voltage may be slightly lower. When it's colder, the voltage may be a little bit higher. And this one basically adjusts the resistance of the battery to match for the solar panels. That sounds the great. Resistance. I'm gonna pretend like I understood everything you said. <laughs> Mostly I'm getting all the output output from the battery and the circuit breaker. From there it goes into the battery. And also all the consumers that go in a smaller circuit breaker come out here. And then it comes out here and then the blue flows, blows flu, fuse blows. <laughs> uh, yeah, you've broken the circuit. So it must, it doesn't start catching fire. Now this is, I think, another episode of using not the right tool for the job. But I guess it works.
it's a fairly good crimp, just it's not made for this plastic. And then we only need this connection, and then we're almost there. Next would be hooking up this cables coming from the roof. But you always hook up the battery first, so this guy wakes up and knows what battery is installed. And then you can feed in the power from solar. Shall I push the magic button, the smoke button? It releases the magic smoke. This goes in positive, this goes in negative. I press the smoke button. Oh, it turns on. <laughs> Pretty good. Well, let's hook up the solar then. So, that's a good sign that it that did is, not smoke. Yes. That it did not release its magic smoke because once it's out of the device, it doesn't work anymore. Wait, what do you mean? They only give it you, you with one charge of smoke. Like, once the smoke is released, it's broken. The fuse? No, this device only has one charge of smoke. Oh, how, what's the likelihood that you'll fuck it up? I think they have even protection against reverse polarity, so. Not that likely. Oh, you mean if somebody like hooked it up opposite? Yes. By accident. Yes. Look, italicized spreadsheet. <laughs> Cover the only thing in spreadsheets. <laughs> My entire job is building spreadsheets for people. Babe. It's the only thing I think about. But it's charging at like 2.4 amps. Which is times what's the panel voltage 32 volts so 32 times 2.4 is 70 80 like that 80 watts it's not much coming in at this grade a that's why i wanted quite some solar i expected more even on a grade a <laughs> oh. but i mean it is actually pretty overcast 60 to 100 watts on a cloudy day times 10 hours is 600 watt hours to 800 watt hours it's just enough to run the fridge <laughs> well that's why i wanted a big battery so we can overcome some bad days i'm very depressed that this guy is, is not starting and saying check glow plug but i checked glow plug and glow plug well that's a hard word to say glow plug is fine it lights up, but it still doesn't start the heat up. But this guy works. Wow, it's really that scary. <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing else I can do today. I'm depressed. Oh, you want me to go out and have dinner and watch it? Sure. Bit. And then it'll rain tomorrow so we can see the leak. Yeah, that's another depression. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. It's not all fun, guys. Moments like this, it's grey, it's rainy, and nothing works. And you have no luck. And no luck. <laughs> Alright, bye. Bye. <laughs> Make sure it snaps in, and then you put more. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> We just installed our IKEA PAX wardrobe. I know what you guys are all thinking. What are they thinking using IKEA for a 30,000 kilometer road trip? Do they seriously think this is gonna last on the road? Honestly, we don't know. We went this route because the wardrobe from IKEA are super light, easy to install. And we bought a box for that reason, so that we could get off-the-shelf furniture. Let us be your guinea pigs, because 
We've seen one count of this on YouTube where the guy said he built his whole, whole camper with IKEA furniture and it worked, but you know, we'll see how it goes. Of course you can't just throw it in and call it a day, so we actually added four brackets on the ground, connected it to our box frame, so it is fairly sturdy. I think we still have to do something on that side, but again, I think it it's gonna last us because it's actually connected to our box frame. So when it comes to hot water, you can either heat it via gas or via your heater. Or we decided to do it electrical. So we got this 10 liter water heater. It's usually running off mains voltage, but that's not really what I think is a smart way to do. So you can get these replacement heater coils. And this one is for our 24 volt system. So you pretty much take the old one out, take the new one in, wire it all up, and we have a heater that runs off 24 volt DC. For this heating element with 600 watts, it's about 30 to 40 minutes for this whole thing to heat up. How much did you pay for this hot water tank? It was like 80 bucks on Kijiji. It's only six months old, it's pretty good. Very How happy. How much would you normally pay for it? These are like 220 or so new. What about if we had used a on-demand hot water system? Well, I wasn't really found on the idea of doing like a propane heater because there's like exhaust gases and you have to hook up propane gas so this one is free of any debris. You really just use your solar power to get hot water and we should have enough solar if we have a sunny day and if it's not so sunny you don't sweat, you don't need to shower. <laughs> it's gonna take me a while to actually get behind the secrets. So you see some insulation oh, cool. popping out. So this is the inside. It's the heating element and this is the heat control. So as you can see the wires coming in go into this little switch and then it really just goes into this heater element which is being turned off and on depending on how hot the water is. If it's hot enough it turns it off, if it's too cold it turns it back on. So I have to rip this one out and replace it with something that can switch my 24 volt and I pull this one out to replace it with this 24 volt version. You can get this for fairly cheap. This was like 40 bucks Canadian off Amazon. So I think that's a viable option to have hot water in your camper. And you're just out of luck. Is it gonna be an epic? I'm sorry, I have to turn this. That didn't work, guys. <laughs> so I went to the Home Depot and thought, maybe with a proper socket, I can do it. But then this happened. What well, was <laughs> turning and turning and turning. And, and only this piece turned. My plan now is cut it halfway. And that way, hopefully, I can I just get two halves and remove the entire piece. Yep, that's what I pictured. Oh, what happened? The plate broke. So there is hopefully now a gap in this whole thing that releases some of the pressure against the wall and I'm gonna do another try and see if I get it off. Look at that! Oh ew! Yeah of course it's a little ew. That's so gross! If you have like hard water it's uh lime. Let's see if and the other one fits. Yes. I mean of course, we have to clean it first. Just fit. Well, you look at that. And that's a wrap. This episode was a long one, so we'll be brief. We've got how to build custom drawers and a custom shower pan coming up, so hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications to make sure you don't miss our upcoming videos. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you on the road to pitches.